Welcome to KioWare University, where we cover the ins and outs of using KioWare to its fullest potential. Today, we'll be sitting in on a demonstration with Matt from our support team on how to update content within Keo Cloud. Welcome. Today, we're going to cover content updating using Keo Cloud. So when you're updating your KioWare client, we have two ways to remotely update the settings file. Uh, both are using this remote settings configuration that can be found inside the general tab of the config tool. So if we go ahead and turn that on, you'll see that there's a remote config URL here. So when you're doing content updating, this URL will point to a specific settings file for Keyware. And then anytime that settings file changes, Keyware is going to look at that file, see the change, and go ahead and download and apply the update to this kiosk here. Now the two different ways to do this are either by using a local file or a remote file. So the easier setup by far is going to be using the, re the remote file. However, uh, you can also get a little bit more control using a local file because when you use a local file, you're pushing that to the kiosk from Keo Cloud, which is what we're going to be covering today. Uh, but real quick, if you're using a remote file, the way that would look is you would have your website or uh, your, if you have an IIS server or something like that, you can direct to that file as well. Pretty much anywhere all the kiosks can point to, to grab a remote settings file from, that they can all kind of connect to there. So it would look something like uh, yourwebsite.com slash, and you can have any structure you want, but um, keyword settings slash um, settings.kwpkg. So it would look something like this. Uh, you're pointing directly to a keyword settings file every time. So now that we're pointed out to this remote file, you can set all of your kiosks up to point to this remote settings file. Now, when you want to update your settings file, all you have to do is change the settings file that's, that's hosted in this location one time. And all of the kiosks that are pointing to it are going to go ahead and download those changes and apply them to the kiosk. So that's the easier way to set this up and do it. The other way is going to be using Keo Cloud to do the push and actually push the settings file down to the kiosk. And when you do that, it's going to look, this is going to look a little bit different. Uh, you're probably going to use a local file in that case. And it's going to look more like this. So you could, you, I mean, this is if you dropped it directly in your C drive, um, then this basically, this is going to point to a local file on your computer. It's going to be the same type of settings file. It's just going to be local on the computer. And the way we're going to make changes to the local file on all the computers is to use Keo Cloud to push that file down to the computer. And that's what we're going to cover in this training here um, is how to use Keo Cloud. How to, first of all, how to configure the Keyware client here and then how to use Keo Cloud to push the settings file down to the computer to the right location so that you can remotely update your settings using Keo Cloud. So there's two settings that you need to be aware of in the Keyware config tool to make this happen. The first setting is this remote settings configuration. Uh, in order for Keyware to see a new settings file and apply those changes, it needs to be pointed to a settings file. So we're going to be setting this up with a local settings file. Uh, so we need to decide where we want to put that. And the other thing that we need to configure is in the kiosk management tab, you're going to be connected to your Keo Cloud using this. So in your Keyware server URL, you're going to have your Keo Cloud URL. I'm not going to put a real one in here. I'm just going to put a fake one. So I'm just going to put a fake one so that we can go ahead and uh, look at these settings. So this bottom content updating, you want to make sure is turned on because this is how you, uh, the kiosk gets files pushed from Keo Cloud to the kiosk. It has to have content updating turned on to do that. And this content update root path here, what this is, is this is where any files that are pushed from Keo Cloud will fall into this directory. Um, so what we want to do is we want to coordinate this directory with the directory that our settings files are hosted in, that they're pointed to here with the remote settings configuration. So you're going to push it from Keo Cloud. It's going to go into this directory. And then we want uh, our remote settings configuration to look in whatever directory we have specified um, down here in kiosk management tab so that it sees the file. So the default one 
is the directory that you see here, c colon slash the inet pub ww root keyword content. So we're just gonna use the default directory for this demo. So I'm gonna copy this directory and I'm gonna go ahead and paste the directory right in here. So you can see, now we're gonna push it from keyword server. It's gonna fall into this directory. And then you can see in our general tab here, we're looking for a file named settings.kwpkg inside of that content update root directory that we just configured in the kiosk management tab. So we're gonna push that file down from KioCloud. It's gonna fall right into this directory here. And when it does, it's gonna be seen by KioWare and it's gonna go ahead and apply those changes that you made. We're gonna go ahead and open up KioCloud now and we're gonna cover the way, what we need to configure on the KioCloud server itself. All right, so you can see here, we're now logged into KioCloud. Hopefully your kiosk is already configured to properly connect to KioCloud and you've already tested the connection uh, from your Keyware config tool and have seen that connect successfully. Uh, we're gonna definitely need that connected in order to do the content push. So prior to doing a content push, we need to upload the file that we wanna push down to the kiosk. So we've got the kiosks all configured now. We need to upload the file to Keyware, we need to, or to KioCloud. We need to create a content revision with that file in it. And then we need to push that file down to the kiosks. That way they can see the settings file and they can go ahead and update with it as well. So prior to uploading the file, you're gonna first need to create a new file. And the way you would do that is you would either log into an existing kiosk that you already have set up, or maybe you've got a test kiosk at, on, on your own machine with all of the settings files intact there. So what you would do is you would open Keyware, which we're gonna go ahead and do. Uh, you would make the change that you wanna make. So say I've got the start page is m.keyware.com. Say in the new settings file we push to the kiosk, we want it to be google.com. So we're gonna go ahead and make that change on just one kiosk because we need an updated settings file to push down to all of the kiosks. After we make that change, we're gonna export the settings, making sure that the settings name is correct. I'm just gonna leave it on my desktop here for easy access. So the settings file is now exported so that we can upload it to KioCloud and push it to all of the kiosks. Then when they get the new settings file, they're all gonna have the new start page of google.com. So to upload it to uh, KioCloud so that you can access it to create a content revision and push it to the kiosks first, we're gonna to wanna to go into the site management tab on the left here, and then the site management tab on the top. From here, you can see right in the middle, there is an option for site file manager. This site file manager is how we upload files to KioCloud so you can use them in content revisions. Now this is really important, this next part. Anytime you create a new content revision, you wanna create a new folder for it. So you can see here, I've got content update one, content update two, content update three. Anytime there's a new content update revision, you want a new folder. Content update four. There we go. So the reason we wanna create a new folder every time we do a content update is because all of the settings files have the same name. They're all gonna be named settings.kwpkg uh, in this example that I'm doing. So we wouldn't be able to upload them all to the same folder without overwriting old settings. At some point in the future, you might wanna push an old content revision down to the kiosk. So say we change the domain to google.com here, and then we decide, oh wait, we want it to be m.keyware.com. Google.com's not working properly. Well, if we have all of our old settings files saved inside of their own folders, it's really easy to go ahead and push a content revision with an old settings file. But if we've overwritten it, we're not gonna be able to do that. So we're gonna create a new folder for each content revision. So we've created content update four. We're gonna go ahead and upload our settings file, which we saved to the desktop here, settings.kwpkg. We're gonna go ahead and upload that file into that new folder we just created. So now it's uploaded to KioCloud. So now we can create a content revision and push it down to all of the kiosks. So to create your content revision, uh, we're not gonna go into too much as far as what KioCloud can do, uh, but I will tell you how it's structured here. Uh, under site management, you can push a site-wide push. And what that means is we can create a content revision for the entire site. 
every single kiosk on our site could get the content revision. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to do it as a project specific content revision. So I could click into one of these projects and create a content revision just for the project. And what that means is all of the kiosks that are inside of this project would get the content revision. And the final way we can create a content revision is kiosk specific. We can click into a specific kiosk and create a content revision just for that kiosk and push it to just that kiosk. And, this, and they're all done the same way. Uh, so if we want to do a site management one or a site wide one, we click into the site management tab and then click content management in the upper right here. To do a project revision, we click into a project, click project management tab, and then click content management in the top right here. And to push it to a kiosk, which is what we're gonna do for this example, we would click into a kiosk itself, click the utilities tab in the top middle, the top middle and then click kiosk content right here. So once you're in this, you can see all of the previous revisions you've pushed down to the kiosks in this drop down here. But we're, we're creating a new revision to push to the kiosk. So we're gonna leave it on add new release and click select. Once in here, you can go ahead and give a revision number. We're gonna name this revision number two. You can type any features, changed, start page URL. And after that, we always recommend you check is base revision. And basically uh, what this does is it makes it so if there were other content revisions between the revision you're on and the last revision that you pushed, it's not gonna push all of the revisions in between. If it's a base revision, it's gonna just push this revision. Then we're gonna click apply changes. Uh, so now this revision has been created, we wanna add files to it. So at the top here, you can see a new files tabs appeared and we're gonna click add file. So in here, you can see everything from your site file manager. And most recently we created content update four with settings.kwpkg. So we're gonna go ahead and add this file to our revision. So this is our current revision. We're on revision number two. We're pushing content update four slash settings.kwpg down to the kiosk. So there's just one last thing we have to do before we push this down to the kiosk. And what that is, you can see here the file path is slash content update four slash settings. However, our kiosk, if you remember, let me go ahead and switch back to that. Our kiosk is looking into just this keyword content directory. So if we push it like this, it's gonna add a new directory of content update four slash settings.kwpkg. But our kiosk is only looking in this con keyword content directory specifically for the settings.kwpkg. You can see here the directory is looking into. So what we need to do is we need to uh, click into this file here. Uh, to do that, uh, all you have to do is hover your mouse anywhere over the file and click. And once you're in here, you can see the file server path. This is where it's stored on the server and the file client path. So the file client path gets appended to the end of your content update root path when it's pushed down. Your content update root path is what we configured right here in the keyword config tool. So basically anything that's in the file content path will be appended to the end of your content update root path. Well, we don't want this to be appended because that's not what we're looking for our settings file. So to fix that, all we have to do is change it to just a backslash. And what that means is this settings.kwpkg file will be pushed directly into the content update root path, which means in the general tab here, where we're pointed to the, we're pointed to the content update root path with the settings file directly in the content update root path. So this is exactly how we wanna create our content revision for it to be successful. So we're gonna go ahead and save this and click apply changes. And that's it. Click apply changes one more time and we can go ahead and push this revision to the kiosk. Um, so this one is a kiosk specific revision. When we push it, it's gonna push just to the kiosk. If it was a site-wide revision, push to the, all of the kiosks in the site and a project revision just to the kiosks in a given project. So all we have to do is click push to kiosk click OK. It's now set this kiosk to download this revision. So the way it works from here is 
once the kiosk is connected to the internet, let me flip back over to the here. Once this kiosk is online, connected to the internet, and Kiware is running, it's gonna go ahead and first, it's going to check for content updates every 60 minutes. So once it sees from Kiware server that there's a content update ready for it, it's gonna go ahead and download that content update in the background. But it's not gonna do anything with it until the kiosk is no longer in use. So if you have, in the attract an activity tab here, if you have an inactivity timer set, the kiosk will wait until it's inactive to go ahead and restart and apply that content update. If you do not have an inactivity timer set, the kiosk will restart right away as soon as it sees there's a content update that came through and got downloaded, which means it could potentially interrupt a user session if you're not using an inactivity timer. So that's just something to be aware of. So after it checks, it sees there's a content update available, uh, it's going to go ahead and download it in the background. The kiosk is no longer in use. Keyword is going to restart. And when it restarts, it's going to go ahead and apply that content update. At that time, it's going to move the settings file you just pushed into the correct folder, into this folder here. So as Keyword is restarting, it's going to see that there is a new settings file in this folder. And Keyword is going to go ahead and apply those changes and change the start page to google.com of all of the kiosks this revision was just pushed to. Thank you for watching Kioware University. Remember to check out other lessons with other features to learn how you can take full advantage of Kioware.